there's a number of different breath training, I guess, you know, systems or ways to go about it out there. You've got um, the Wim Hof me method, which is probably one of the most widely known ones, I guess. And yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. obviously there's a lot of different ways to apply breath holding. Some of them might even contradict each other. And I mean, I went to a, uh, a kind of a surfing uh, breath holding training course with Nam Baldwin. I don't know if you know Nam, but um, yep. yeah, so yeah, I went, I yeah. Yeah, went to that and that was, that was excellent. And uh, that was basically surf specific. And um, so yep. I, what, what's the difference between what you're teaching compared to, let's say, the Wim Hof method or maybe what Nam teaches to the surf guys? So how, how does it differentiate? Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they're three vastly different programs. If you're looking at them, the NAMS program, breath enhancement training, you know, the Wim Hof method and, and what I do. Um, my foundation is in science. So I'm a physiologist and a physiotherapist and I want to measure outcomes. So um, Wim Hof, for example, so his breathing technique, the way I approach it is more about a meditative space to enhance your feelings. Now, we know the breath has a really potent role in, in changing your physiology. Um, I wouldn't recommend the Wim Hof method for a swimmer pre-race, for example. So the Wim Hof method, you're essentially hyperventilating the system, trying to increase the pH of the blood um, to alkaline the body. Now, great maybe for the chronic long-term condition treatments, but really in a performance environment, if you're exposing the body to higher pH levels, your oxygen affinity increases. So you're not going to be able to deliver that oxygen to the effectively to the muscles. So wrong space to use for Wim Hof. Um, the Nan Baldwin's breath enhancement training, fantastic program. Um, you know, really surf specific. Uh, and from my understanding, you know, he doesn't put um, his athletes on a, uh, let's measure your volume. How big is the largest inhalation you can measure? What is the strength of your inspiratory muscles? Let's measure this right now. So from my understanding, uh, that's how my program would differ um, to his program. Um, I, I'm not, I wouldn't put himself and um, Wim Hof in the same category. Um, I think that Nam's programs are much more specific to an athlete. And um, although Wim Hof's great at exposing um, many different people to an alternative lifestyle and exercise and the importance of living a healthy life. Um, his program is pretty general in its approach and I don't know if you would agree, me, agree with me with that. Um, you know, his philosophy is excellent, but uh, in terms of a breath training program, it, it, it's pretty lackluster in, in its attack. Um, Nam, I, I can't really speak for himself, but the way my program would differ from his would be being a little bit more scientific about measuring the results for a patient, delivering a program, and then objectively testing those results as well. So, you know, like I said before, sitting down with the athlete, James Roberts, for example, needs to take a big breath off the block because he's going to hold his breath for the whole time. So let's make that the best goddamn breath that he can achieve so that he's never worrying about taking a breath towards the end of that 50 metres sprint. So I want to... Train, flexible training system, I want a technique training system, I want a strength training system, I want to get it really powerful so that he can get that inhalation in as quickly as possible um, and I'll test him along the way. If I'm not achieving the correct objective measures then I need to change what I'm delivering to his system and then that's where my exercise physiologist um, university training comes in. It's okay, well, look, we've done a drop set with his uh, inspiratory muscles. We've overloaded his inspiratory muscles. Now we're going to tax the system under load. So let's fatigue it and then ask him to hit certain measures as well. So we are really potently stimulating his inspiratory muscles to get that adaptation that we're after. So I don't want to rubbish anyone in this breath training space. As you've mentioned, there are a lot of different mechanisms and different ways to approach it. Um, you know, the breath is pretty mystical. It's, you know, it does have a connection to the autonomic nervous system. And, um, you know, like the heart, it we just breathe and we're not really conscious of it. But unlike the heart, we do have volitional control over it. So, you know, I can over-breathe now. I can become all tingly and numb and, and my muscles can contract, which is exactly what happens during the Wim Hof method. Now, what benefit does that drive and give to my system? Uh, maybe if I'm uh, a person who's unhealthy and, and making the wrong decisions in life and, and really need to focus on my health, then it might enable me to get my mind into a space where it's becoming 
much more easy to tap into a, a positive health space. But if I'm an athlete and looking to warm up or if I'm looking to improve my volumes or looking to improve my performance, the, the Wim Hof method might not be what I want to tap into. So, yeah, I think it's taking each athlete and each sport on its, on its merit and uh, applying what you need. And, and I always talk to the coach. I always talk to the swimmer and say, look, what, what are you after? You know, what, why are you here? Uh, and what do you want to achieve from my program? And then I give those tools to the athlete and to the coach to say, if he wants to take less breath, I can help him achieve that. If he wants to take a faster breath in because he's um, he's, take, he's turning his head too long, if that's a technique thing you want to work on, I can give the athlete those tools to do that. 